Hey guys, Eddie here from Deland Property. Today I want to do a really uh, quick video and I want to ex explain my thoughts and opinions on if sh you should buy one property for $750,000 or if you should buy three properties for $250,000 each. They at seven fifty as well. So I built my own property portfolio over the last few years to 14 properties. By the time I was 26 and I'm still growing that portfolio at the moment. This, this video is just about explaining different strategies and different ways on how you can actually use money and use different properties to, I guess, continue growing your portfolio and getting to where you want to be. L looking behind me on the board, you've got one property. Let's say, for example, we're going to run through different scenarios. Say you buy one property for $750,000, you know, or you could buy three properties for $250,000 each. The different scenarios, so looking at the different scenarios here. Say for example, you want to buy your first investment property, first, second, third, whatever it is, but if you say you go to your mortgage broker and they say you can borrow 750,000. If you do buy a $750,000 property, you know, you could be looking at a major capital city within Australia, maybe a blue collar area or whatever it is. And the problem I have with this scenario of buying just one property for $750,000 is that Rental yield. So rental yield is one. <clears throat> the property for seven hundred fifty thousand will probably only rent out, depending on what market it is, for five hundred dollars a week. Sometimes four fifty, sometimes six hundred. We'll just say five hundred dollars per week. So rent's probably only going to be about five hundred dollars per week, and it's going to have to service the mortgage for that. So. $500 per week, $750,000 purchase price. It's pretty uh, crap rental return in my opinion. It's probably about a 3% 3, 3 yield or 4% yield roughly. <clears throat> that's, that's one thing there. A major thing that I look at the faults of, you know, just buying one property for 750,000 is, you know, people think you might get growth, but with this scenario here, the mortgage repayments on 750,000 or see even if you did a 10 or 20% deposit, the mortgage repayments would be probably anywhere between $600 to $800 per week on principal and interest. So say if there's $700 per week for the mortgage, per week mortgage, you automatically minus $200 a week, so you're losing $10,000 a year in holding this property. That's not including council rates, water rates, management fees, insurance, strata. Well, that stuff can equal out to another hundred dollars per week minimum as well. So, the whole, the total holding expenses for this property at seven hundred fifty thousand is probably going to be eight hundred to nine hundred dollars a week. Say eight hundred dollars per week, and you're only getting five hundred rent. So you're automatically losing three hundred dollars per week in holding this property. So you minus three hundred. Per week just on holding costs or fifteen thousand dollars per year now you might say that sure it could have good capital growth it could go up by you know two percent five percent ten percent or whatever and the growth would outweigh the rental income the question i ask you is how long are you going to hold that property and no matter what happens, even if you're buying, say for example, you're buying now, it's 2018, it's Sydney for 750,000, you know, and it's renting out for $500 per week. Sydney's and Melbourne's just come off, uh, you know, a market cycle. Most likely it's gonna be flat or with fluctuations. It most likely will not jump up in value a huge, you know, amount for a very long period of time. Could be five years, seven years, 10 years, etc. Most likely it could be, you know, fluctuations as Sydney and Melbourne just went through a big boom. I personally do not like this idea right here. You put all your eggs in one, one basket, basically. You put all your cash, all your capital in buying a property for $750,000. It's not even gonna service itself. What happens if you lose your job? You're gonna have to sell this property because it's not gonna be able to look after itself. You know, the, the rent is nowhere near where the expenses are. So that's just absolutely shit in my opinion. So I wouldn't do that. What, I, what I've done and what I do, and what I think is a much better alternative so you buy three properties valued at $250,000 each instead. What, going back to the first thing, rent right here, on rent on a $250,000 property 
if you're looking at the right areas, the right capital city, um, depending on what market cycle you, you're in. I buy properties for 250,000 and you know some of those rent out for 360, 380 a week. So per week in rent on a $250,000 purchase, you know, your mortgage repayments expenses might equal out to you know, $300, $350 per week, but you're getting say 360 to 380 rent. So that's about an 8% yield, where this scenario was probably around a 4% yield. So the rent for one thing was enough to actually service it. You're using the same amount of, of capital. So 750,000 and you bought three of these properties, 250,000 on properties for 750,000. The rent, say if you rent out for 380 per week and you've got times three of them, you know, so there's 380 and then, then another 380, you know, so you're looking that rental income right there. So 380, 380, 380, which is, you know, over a thousand dollars a week compared to $500 per week in rental income. So the rent on this scenario is double than what it is on this scenario. It doesn't like a lot, it's very, very simple in, in my opinion, which I would rather. You've got three properties, you could buy them in different areas. You could buy one in Queensland, one in, you know, an hour out of Sydney, you could buy one in Melbourne, whatever it is, you could buy one Gold Coast, one Brisbane, etc. As long as you're sticking in the capital city, that's what I usually do and it's definitely worked and that's what I would recommend sticking to within an hour or 45 minutes, even half an hour of a capital major city center. So you've got three properties, they're looking after themselves and the biggest thing, if you want to build a portfolio, you want to get to 5, 10, 15 properties. Um, you know, I've got 14 in my portfolio at the moment, I'm just turned 27 so I want to hit 20, 30 properties by the time I'm 30. So very, very, you know, achievable. Um, this scenario here, because the rent is so high, the rent so high, you're getting over a thousand dollars a week rent, could be more, could be less, but it's thousand dollars compared to this scenario, and you're only getting 500 of this. In terms of finance, when you're going to get loans from a bank, say you buy this property, and your borrowing capacity was 750,000, so you went out and bought, bought, bought a property for 750,000, and only rents for 500. Most likely when you go back to the bank, depending on what bank you go with, your borrowing capacity is going to be drastically brought down. So if you could borrow 750 before, you might only be able to borrow 250 now. And then you could buy one small property and then you're out of the game. You can't buy anymore. So depending on what rental incomes you, what properties you purchase and what rents they rent out for has a massive impact on how much more property you can purchase. These right here, these kind of properties, seven to 8% rental yields, could be a, a townhouse, a unit, a house, yeah, you could balance your portfolio with houses and townhouses as houses always usually generate lower rental income or lower rental yields. But this scenario here, you go back to the bank to buy your fourth, fifth, sixth property, most likely you're gonna have a lot better chance of being able to get loans across the line and be able to continue expanding your portfolio because your rents, you know, over a thousand dollars a week. And this scenario is only five hundred dollars a week. So cash flow is a massive, a massive thing to look at. My own portfolio, a lot of the properties that I've bought, the rent is double what the actual mortgage is because because I've, for one, I've raised the rents over time. Another, I've bought from the get-go properties that have had seven, eight, nine percent rental yields and over time, I've gradually increased the rent. So now they've become 10% yields, 11, 12, 13, 40% and the loans have gone down as well over, over naturally over time. So. This is a quick video, didn't want to take up too much time, but 750,000, 750,000, three properties or one property. Over $1,000 in rent per week, maybe more, or $500 per week. Losing $15,000 per year could be more. Probably a, a neutral to slightly positive geared uh, position right here. These things can keep going up. And I guess one last thing, $750,000 property, depending on what ha what's happening in the Australian market, the $750,000 property can easily come down $80,000, $100,000. You know, that can happen. You know, it can lose value or it can drop in a soft market. Very unlikely, you buy a property within a metro area for $250,000. You buy well, very likely it's gonna go down to one hundred fifty dollars You know, it's very, very unlikely, it's just logic.
with supply and demand. So I hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, catch you next video. Bye.